Hello, welcome to another Puzzling Time video. I'm going to give a full breakdown of um, one of my favourite puzzles uh, at the moment, which is the Rhombic Maze Burr. Now, here's a picture. This is the Rhombic Maze Burr, and uh, designed by Derek uh, Bosch, and we'll come back to this in a second, um, but built uh, by Stefan uh, Tripjo, and it is a fantastic, fantastic piece of kit. So this is the actual uh, puzzle. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, as well as the puzzle in the bag, you also get um, some spare pins um, and a tool for setting your uh, rhombic maze burr up. So the, the pins are just small little pet metal pins. A few spares, we don't need to uh, look at them any further. So let's put that to one side. And the Rhombic Maze Burr is a uh, design um, that, that Derek came up with, really, from um, things like the Kagan Cubic um, Maze Burr. And, um, you know, later on you had other ver variations of that, like the Split Maze Burr. Well, this is a Rhombic version, so much more complex. Um, and because it's much more complex, actually, a lot more kind of adaptability, which is why... You tend to get an email PDF of the challenges, so 50 challenges. I think a lot of those are put together by uh, John Ross. Um, this is obviously a printed out copy. I, I went to the effort of printing this out. Uh, a few upgrades from the original. So you see here we have these little uh, screws that hold the panels in place. Um, these panels have to be taken out uh, and reconfigured for each challenge. Uh, well, to, to stop kind of the the effort of unscrewing and screwing back in all these little uh, screws. Uh, uh, Stefan came up with the idea of using these magnetic pins here and we have a magnetic tool, um, which if you don't uh, throw on the floor, you can use to grab the pins and pull them out one at a time. So just use this bag here so I don't lose any pins. Uh, and once the pins are out, the panels can slide off. Um, so it's a very strong magnet. These pins are actually held in to the uh, frame uh, by magnets themselves. We've just got a stronger magnet to remove them. So let's get all 12 out as quickly as possible. So you can see the bare bones of this puzzle. And you can see as I do this kind of how easy it is to dissemble and how amazingly well made this puzzle is. So I think that's all of the pieces out. And here we see kind of the bare bones of the puzzle. We have all these sliding panels, um, which our pieces kind of uh, fix onto um, with a pin through. Now on each of these, we have some letters. So letter A, for example, here. Um, and we use those letters for setting up the different challenges. So let's just have a look at that. So on the uh, documentation you get, we have uh, different challenges. It tends to come with uh, challenge one uh, already set up. And you can see the letters correspond to the different panels. So for example, this panel here, uh, looks like uh, panel I, so it would go on panel I with the I in the in the top left corner there. So I'm going to set one of these challenges up. Um, I'm going to go to set up challenge three. So this booklet comes with the move with the the setup, and it comes with the the solve as well. So it tells you in an ideal situation you would take forty moves to set this up. So it's far too to solve this. So I find the A panel is always the same piece in the A panel and it's always set up the same way. It's this one with the opening and put it on um, in this orientation, A in the top right, put that P shape in there. Then we take a, a pin and we put a pin in. This can be a little bit uh, fiddly sometimes just to make sure everything's perfectly lined up and those pins all drop in 
uh, the more panels you've got in, the easier it, it, it is. Um, but this is a lot easier than the uh, original uh, where we had to do kind of all the all the different screwing. So that's in there. Now I could search around and find B, which is this one here, find the right piece for B, which uh, I believe is this one, and then you know orientate it correctly. I've set a couple of these up, and actually the they have it's very intuitive these pictures to kind of follow. So um, the first one or two times you set it up, you kind of just checking you are getting things in the right place and you're you're not missing anything. Um, but really, it's, it's quite easy kind of to to set up. Uh, having said that, it does take a minute or two. So what I'll do is I'll just um, switch the camera off whilst I carry on uh, setting this up, and then we'll come back and see what the assembled puzzle looks like and talk a little bit more about uh, what the actual challenges are. So here we are, just put the last panel in. Uh, it took about two minutes, maybe a little bit less. And um, let's discuss what the actual um, objective is. So the objective of each challenge is to remove the piece that is on the A panel. It is the only piece that can slide in the original configuration. And if we look at the piece, it's, it's got this opening. So the idea would be to slide the, the pin around so that it comes out of this opening. Um, now, when we start, we will probably start with a couple of restricted moves. So here, that is the only move I can make. And then this is also a force move. So I just push the pin and it moves that slider underneath that we saw before. The only option is to, to move this uh, panel to the left. Uh, now I've got an option here. So when I go up, this panel can either move to the right or to the left. Um, and, and like you can with a maze, you have different paths you can take. If you take the wrong path, you're going to hit a dead end at some point. Um, so if I go this way, if I go to the left, um, go up. There's no point going down because I can't move this pin towards me. So I have to go up. Same here, up to the left. Again, there's no point moving this down because that's a dead end. So up. This seems like a lot of moves, so it's probably wrong. This way, this way. These are all forced moves, and I've got to a point where I'm stuck. And there's no other option to move. So I take all of those moves back. Uh, and remember, if I ever get stuck as well, I can just um, take the pins out to reset it. I'm actually going to go all the way back to the beginning. At uh, the beginning. And we now know that after these first couple of forced moves, we want to go to uh, the left of this panel. Um, now, obviously, I want to move this pin and always keep an eye on what is actual aim. So I need this panel to move that way. And then the one underneath, the sliding panel underneath, towards me. So no point doing that move because... This is the only option. And I've got a feeling that what I want to do is have this panel move out of the way. Yes, yeah, so that now I can I can move this down. And that can move that way. And this is stuck though. So let's have a look at that again. If I slide this way, I can come down. Can I go up? So I still need to move this panel. Hmm. So it does take a bit of a, a bit of thinking, a bit working out. That's down. Oh, that can go across. Right, so now made some significant progress here. 
Okay, how do I get this cross? So I have to have this moved. This this top panel moved so the pin can move underneath. This is that only way. That's the only sensible way to go. And seem to be going around in a bit of a loop here, which uh, I'm going that way, this way. Hopefully, we'll loop around to our P panel. Indeed, it does. There's our P panel. Now, slide this across. Let's slide that down. That is complete. So, if I'd done that correctly, um, it would have been 40 moves. You could now take out the pins and, and reset it kind of manually. Um, or if you're feeling brave, you can try and reverse the moves. I think it's only 40 moves, so uh, it might be a little bit easier just to try and do those 40 moves. So that went that way. This first bit was all pretty much forced for the last bit. You can see how easily and how well the, the pieces actually all um, slide and move as well. Uh, just a testament really to the printing. Uh, it looks like uh, something that has, you know, gone through some really, really, really high-end kind of machinery. It's just been printed and finished so well. Uh, okay, so it was this last bit, which was the bit I got stuck in at the beginning. Uh, just like this there we go much easier to kind of reset and there we have it that was the solve for solution 3 now you're not going to remember that solve um, there are over 50 challenges uh, in the book so um you know, don't worry if you think that was a bit of a spoil. I promise you, after doing two of these yourself, and when you by the time you get up to number three, you will have forgotten that. Um, it does ramp up quite quickly. So if we can go to, um, say, solution twenty-five, which is halfway through, it's one hundred and forty-five moves. Um, on the on the note of the solutions as well. You'll notice there's the A, Bs, that's, that's the, the movement of the panels. So every single one starts uh, A to D. So if we look at the puzzle, that move is A to D. So that's the A panel, that's the D panel. Um, and then, you know, it's going to be, because uh, it's A to D, I think it always starts with, um, with E, A, or I think it will always start with E, A, is that pin moves. And obviously then, depending on what the configuration is here, it could slide in either direction. Now, if you have a move like that, that is a half, well, that is a full move. So they would be denoted by capital letters like BF. If you do a full slide, so if you had it in this situation and you slide it all the way across, that's a double move. So they actually um, use small case letters. So that's how the solution works. So. B, C would mean you're going to take from B two moves across to C. Uh, so that's kind of how the notation works in the book. Absolutely amazing. Let's have a look, by the way, at just problem 50, just so you can see how excruciatingly difficult these can get. And the relatively simple one I did to 379 moves on problem 50, which would be a headache and a half to to try and um, to solve. Um, so there's some really, really um, challenging problems in here. The build quality is amazing. The concept's fantastic. It's not a bank breaker either. Um, for what it cost, it was like 90 euros. For this amount of puzzle, for this quality, absolutely amazing. One of my top, top puzzles um, that, that I've got this year. It, it's kind of up there with, with some of the, the best SDs that I, you know, 
I, I've picked up. So really, really happy um, with, with, with this puzzle. Uh, that's all for now. If you've got any questions at all, uh, please post them below and I will reply to everyone um, about this puzzle um, uh, because I love talking about it. So please post below, give me a thumbs up and I'll speak to you all very soon. Bye for now.